Hey everybody. Hey everybody. So we had some technical difficulties, but hopefully we're all live now. You can see me. Okay. Hopefully I'm in the right place. It was streaming on my on the sweet stuff page before, which is being a bit weird. Hopefully everyone can see me and we are live. If you can see me, please do comment in um, the chat. Comment under this video, that'd be great. And the reason um, I've got my camera on is because I'm sharing my screen and I want to make sure you see my screen more so than my face. <laughs> but I think I'm live. Yes, I'm live. Okay, great. If you can see me, please do comment so I know you're here. Otherwise, I feel like I'm talking to myself, which is totally fine. I'm talking to myself all the time. Oh, great. Hey, Leah. Oh, uh, hopefully everyone can see me. Great. I'm starting to get some comments through. Great. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm really, really glad to be here. I feel like my two worlds have mushed. <laughs> if that's Belinda, great. Hear you loud and clear. Amazing. Um, I feel like my two worlds have, have hit together. Hey, Kylie. Um, I feel like my corporate world, I feel like sometimes I'm a split personality and sometimes it's business Debbie and sometimes it's um, corporate Debbie. But you know what? I'm like, you know what? I'm just one person. So let's just mush it all together. And if I can help you guys with some of that corporate and marketing knowledge, then we'll all win, right? So this is a crafting community. I want to share everything that I know. So I've got a jam-packed prezzo to give you guys. Now, at the end of this, oh, Amanda made it. Yay. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Georgina. Um, and I will, uh, I'm going to try to monitor the comments as, um, as we go, but the reality of some of this, I might miss it. So if I miss your message, I will come back to it. Um, and I'll answer you, um, via private message or in the, in the comment, but here we go. Okay. So this is, um, on camera, I'm just going to move the camera so that I can share my screen and hopefully you can start to see a Canva Prezzo. If you can just make sure. Uh, if someone could comment to make sure that you can see my screen, it should say digital for small business using social media to build communities masterclass. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. I'd much rather you see my screen than see my face because there's a lot of information in here and let's just, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> so as I mentioned to you guys, um, I, I have split personalities. <laughs> So I grew only the sweet stuff. Okay, great. Everyone can see it. I grew only the sweet stuff from nothing um, up until where it is now. And we are growing um, year on year. I'm a community builder, basically. I like just bringing people together, bringing communities online together, right? I have been a corporate marketer for 15 years. These are the kind of some of the brands that I've worked for. But basically, I'm a data nerd, right? I'm a nerd. I love seeing um, things that I'm putting into my all of my marketing and all of my business, uh, my whole business. All I'm doing is literally trying something, testing it, see if it, if it works, and back and forth and doing it all over the place. So it's borderline ADHD, if I'm honest, <laughs> because it's like I'm testing, trying so many different things, and all I want to do is bring the best for you guys, right? So this is my journey in photos. Um, this is where I started um, maternity leave with Christopher, my second baby, in this massive mess in the current study that I'm in now, um, with baby on in his pouch, um, just trying to make my my one order that I had that I, you know, someone on the other side of the world ordered from Etsy, which actually cost me more to send there. <laughs> but it was my first order. So I'm like, it has to be great. It has to be good. Anyway, it is what it is. And I've grown since then, right? After that, moved into my garage, um, simply because there was too much mess here, too much stock. I couldn't, I couldn't keep it in here. And I was happy with my one order, taking my one box with baby on my back, which you can see he's um, transitioned from the front to the back because it was just too heavy. <laughs> um, and then I grew again, buying more stock, bigger loads, again, still in my back, uh, my, um, my garage, but growing again. Um, and after that, once I outgrew the garage, I moved into um, a storage unit, which is basically like one of those Kennards or renter space. Um, I basically, you know, paid a rent every month. And this was my first big bill um, just to house my stock because I had nowhere to, to put it. Right. Then from there, recently, we moved into 3PL probably about three, four months ago. Um, and I I have grown this community since then. And and since in that time as well, I brought on Janine. So Janine, if you're here, I know you're here somewhere. She's been my 2IC and my confidant and my friend and um, 
and helped me move to three uh, to three PL because I took a corporate job at the same time as moving. So I took the corporate job because cost of living, and I was like, I don't want to, um, you know, have the business uh, not grow because I needed to take an income from it. So you know, there it is. But since then, I finished my contract and I haven't gone back. And this is why I'm doing these master classes because I want to share what I know. And then I found myself on ABC News and across ABC um, national TV talking about small business and talking about how the Optus outage affected us greatly, right? So this is my journey and everything that I'm going to teach you in this jam-packed masterclass is going to show you how to get from here to here, right? And this is everything that I've learned and feel free to take anything that I've learned and implement it into your business or into if you're thinking about starting a business. I hope that this will help you. Okay what we will accomplish today. So I'm going to give you a download. Basically, I'm going to word vomit <laughs> everything that you need to start your side hustle. Then we're going to go into basic marketing fundamentals. Then I'm going to give you the hacks because I'm all about the hacks. And, you know, if, if things are much, much more efficient, it means we can put our, our limited resources and limited brain power into something else. Um, and we're going to go through costing materials, which is basically in the base, the fundamentals, right? Okay, before we start, um, I, at the end of this, I'm going to give away a free um, access to my course. So my course is how to grow a personalized gift um, business from start to finish. And the top line um, membership is over $600. So I'm giving it to one crafter in my community for free. All you need to do is to tag us in a post, but I really want you to um, take something away from this, right? So what, what's the one thing that you learn from this and post it on your socials? Because as you'll come to get to know, it's really, really important for consistency, right? Post it on Facebook and Insta and send me a screenshot and I will give away one, um, one crafter. They can have access to my course for free. Okay, so let's go into fundamentals. These are basic, um, ba the basic bare minimum that you need to start any kind of side business, right? Okay, what do you need? I've broken this up into what you need now or what you need later. And Shelly says, thanks for doing this. No problem, Shelly. I'm, I'm glad to be able to do it. Um, okay, so fundamentals, you need a business name, you need an ABN. So you need an ABN, but you need a sole trader ABN. Anyone, you can um, go onto the ASIC website, ASIC, and apply for one for free. Um, and if you want to, if you're stuck on a business name, you don't actually have to register your business name um, in the beginning. You can actually just uh, trade under your sole trader name, right? Again, this is the information that I learned. If I'm wrong, like feel free to let me know, um, but always speak to your accountant or somebody else, a business advisor for advice, right? But um, this is the way that I've done it. So I uh, registered the Only The Sweet Stuff name about a year after I started training and started to realize, okay, there's something here, right? So go onto the ASIC website, get an ABN as a sole trader. Um, and Janine says consistency is a big key. Debbie has taught me, I'm glad, I'm so glad. Um, okay, start a business, uh, a bank account. So for the first um, probably six months of my business, um, you know, I didn't have a dedicated business account and I wish I did, right? And there are free business accounts that you can apply for um, that uh, uh, it's still just a little bit different to a normal trading transaction, uh, normal transaction account, right? So do your research, get a free bank account, just so you know when something comes in that you've made your first order, made a first couple of orders, you know that that money is sitting there separately, right? If I could give you any advice, please do this because when your money gets mushed up, <laughs> it gets so confusing and you're like, am I profitable, am I not? I don't know, right? So if you can, definitely do your research, get a free bank account, a business specific bank account. Okay, insurance. I'm gonna go through this in the next slide, I'll come back to that, right? But bottom line is insurance is really, really important, so we'll get to that in a second. Socials, okay, so when I say get your business name and you don't have to register it yet with ASIC, right? Because you're still under your ABN sole trader, the business name is for your socials and for your website if you decide to have it. The worst thing is if you, you are set on a business name and your socials are taken. Like, for example, there's some random person on the other side of the world that has only the sweet stuff as an Instagram name, right? Which is kills me every time. <laughs> and uh, it's just really confusing when someone goes to find me or they want to tag me, right? They can't. They tag this random person. So just make sure that your business name is not taken or can you change it around so that it's your own, right? So that's why I have on Instagram, only the sweet stuff .com .au, right? Okay. Um, invoicing. So you can go into like a zero software or a free um, invoicing app. There's plenty of them and there's a free invoicing website if you wanted to. You can do that. But I would just use Canva. 
or a Word document, right? When you're starting out, just Google invoice template, right? And start using that to send your invoices because you want to have a record of what is coming in, what is not. And especially when you begin, most likely you're going to begin on Facebook Marketplace or on um, Etsy, for example. Etsy will have its own kind of invoicing, but Facebook Marketplace doesn't, right? And some customers want an invoice, right? So just make sure that you have something in play like that. So an order tracker, an order tracker sounds really fancy, but all it is is a spreadsheet or um, a Word document with charts um, that says who's the customer, when do they need to buy, what are they ordering, and what specifically are they ordering, what colors, what font, what, um, what blank, etc. Et right? When you're talking to many people, especially on Facebook Marketplace or you know, on all social media, it gets so confusing. And the last thing you want is to get, I don't know, what if you make, um, you know, Janine, I'm using your name, but Janine ordered a bottle for her for her grand grandson Dion, and you sent Sam's bottle to Janine. How angry would she be, right? And she's never going to come back to you. Um, so just remember that, um, yeah, just have some sort of tracking, right? And when you when you grow your business and get bigger, we can look at a website where it does it for you. Um, you can have zero as a system to do it for you. Um, but for now, we just want to get going, right? So these are the bare minimum things. So just have a Word document or a spreadsheet. Okay. You want to have your first collection. So you want to have affordable supplies, right? So, um, and you know, whether you shop with me as a blank supplier or not, it's no problem, right? But just have your go-to to know if your customer orders tomorrow and you don't have the stock, how quickly can you get the stock so that you can ex explain to her that, oh, I can make it for you, no problem, but it's gonna be ready in a week, for example, right? The worst thing is, is say, for example, you use a Kmart blank, which, you know, everybody starts off with that. You, you have your photos, your samples, and then some person says, okay, I want that particular bottle. Then you go to Kmart and there's nothing on the shelf. Then you've got to run to like five different Kmarts to find the bottle, right? So again, make sure you have a, a group of suppliers or websites or shops or your go-tos that you know that you can rely on, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I would love to be that blank supplier for you. But again, this is not the point of this. I just want you to have multiple supplies that you can count on. Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay. Big question, insurance. So there was a question before this session about insurance. Um, public liability insurance is really, really important. Now, if you decide, okay, I want to do offline sales and I want to go to my local market, um, you know, there's so many boutique markets on the weekend, etc. <clears throat> they will need you to have, um, they will need you to have uh, public liability insurance. So mymarketinsurance.com.au, last I looked at them, which probably was a couple months ago, so maybe it's a little bit out of date, but they have a very affordable policy that will cover you for um, specifically, specifically for uh, weekend, in, um, sorry, the markets and stuff, but they also cover you for online sales too. So I don't exactly remember how much I paid, but I think it was like $200 for a policy or something like that. And the way I think about insurance is say I make, um, you know, five orders this week, five orders next week, one order the next week, a portion of that sale needs to include some money for the insurance because it's a, it's a must have, it's a definite must have. Your, also your home contents insurance, re revisit that too, because sometimes um, if you're running a business from home, it completely cancels your home insurance, right? And some businesses have, um, uh, so, sorry, some, home contents insurance have a small amount dedicated. So say you're you're only turning around $1,000 a year in terms of your business, then they will allow it, right? So the biggest thing is just to call your insurance and make sure that you're, you're underway. The other thing you could look at is bizcover.com.au. So um, as my business grew, I, uh, I use bizcover now. Um, or you could call a small independent um, business broker and get them to quote you. So literally all you need to do is go to your local Facebook group um, your local community group and say, who's a local business broker? Help me, right? And just call them and ask them first. You might not go with them, but at least you get some information from them. And Janine says um, she has Amy Market Stall. Um, so insurance with Amy for specifically for a market stall. It's really, really important. Yeah. Okay. 
So I kind of touched on this before, but affordable and reliable suppliers, supplies as well, find local supplies that you can get items quickly. IG, like for example, um, do you have a local vinyl store? Do you have um, a supplier that offers free shipping, right? And I've worked really hard to get that um, free shipping, but also quick shipping because we do, um, we change basically our entire supply chain to be able to do same day shipping if it's ordered before 12, uh, 11 a.m. So find suppliers that are able to do that, right? If you, and if you're worried about putting too much money into it to begin with, choose one product. Choose one product that you're gonna concentrate on. Is it a bottle? Is it a bag? Is it a, a pouch? I don't know, but just choose one, right? Choose one and see how you go. If that's great, then use the profits from that to bring out a next product. Don't spread too much too quickly because then all your money is stuck in the stock, right? Yeah. Wholesale. Um, so there's some wholesale at chain stores. So for example, I had a customer who, who was a, um, she ran a soccer team and she wanted a personalized mug for every person, right? Um, and there was like 20 people in the team. So, um, and I didn't, I wasn't a blank supplier then, right? So I didn't have any, any stock and I couldn't find anybody that um, could do it and because it was like the week before Christmas. I called Officeworks and I said, Officeworks, if I buy 50, right? Because I, I wanted to keep some stock for myself. If I buy 50, can you give me a discount? And they did. So instead of it being like $8 a mug, it came down to like $6 or something. I had to pay for 50 for like in, you know, in one go, but Officeworks does it. So you don't know unless you call them and you, you ask them, right? So I, I would try that. Maybe not Kmart, <laughs> that's probably too big, but Officeworks, if you call the line and you ask to speak to the business, um, you know, wholesale section, you know, on the website, how it says, um, I think it's like office supplies or bulk supply, bulk supply price. Just ask and see how you go. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so going back to this, once you've decided on your business name, search all your socials, save the name, right? Start a email address under your new business name. So Gmail offers free emails, for example, or Yahoo, whatever it is, and create social media pages under that email, right? Just to keep everything neat. I wish I did that because now like my Facebook account is under my Gmail and something else, Instagram's under another one. It's really annoying. <laughs> anyway, but once you've done that, I would love to see your social. So please do share it in the VIP group so I can follow you and I can watch your journey as well. If you already have your socials locked and loaded, share them in the group as well because I want to see, but I'm going to go through basic marketing um, and digital marketing, social media basics to help you with that too because I know that's uh, it can be overwhelming. Okay, what do you need later? So Georgina says, me too, I forget that part. I'm assuming you're talking about this, the email or the socials. Anyway, let me know. Um, so fundamentals, there's a bit of a delay, obviously, when I see the comments and when, I, when I'm talking. <clears throat> okay. What do you need later? So everyone thinks that they need to spend $30 a month on a Shopify website or, um, you know, Etsy charges you, I think, 50 cents a listing, for example. You don't need that. You don't need that now, right? Um, I started my business just by doing Facebook Marketplace because it's free and just by doing um, social media organically, right? Jordania said yes, the email. Yeah, I know. I, I, did, I still haven't done that anyway. <laughs> um, so... Start first with Facebook Marketplace if, and your organic social with all the tips that I'm, I'm gonna give you in a second. But do the website thing later because it's a lot of work to develop your website and develop all the photos and all the content and all that, right? You don't need that right now. When you've grown and when it becomes too laborious to go back and forth with a customer, then do the website thing, then, then do the Etsy thing, yeah? Okay, um, and Australia Post My Business Account, so, and later on I'll go through this, but there's a code that will give you band three savings. So how Australia Post is that there's band one to band five, and the more you spend, the cheaper your postage is, right? And of course, Australia Post wants to get as many people in as possible. So there's a retail code, which I hope is still active. I should, probably should have checked that, but I'll send it, I'll have it in my slides later. But start up a business account where um, you have band three savings, so you're not paying as much on postage as if you were, if you were a new, a new customer. Shipping supplies. Do it later, right? Um, because you have to buy it in bulk to get any kind of decent price, right? So you have to buy at least 150 pieces just to get a decent price. So don't buy shipping supplies yet. Try to make do with what you have. Um, and if you need a box, you can still use the Australia Post boxes. You can buy one box or one, one um, satchel, etc right and um you know what let's if you're in a stage where you need to buy supply or packaging maybe we could do a group thing in the um the facebook vip group to say you know 20 for you 20 for you 20 for you but we all get the 100 price you know do you know what i mean anyway but again 
Don't fork out for shipping supplies yet because, again, we don't know if it's going to work. We have to test it. We have to build a community first. That could take a couple months, right? So don't spend your money on shipping supplies yet. I know there's so many sh pretty shipping supplies out there and you want to be ready for that, but just, just not yet. And don't make the same mistake as me because I still have like 50 boxes just sitting there. <laughs> yes. Okay. So... Um, as part of this workshop, everyone's going to get free access to my costing and materials worksheet because I get so many questions like, how do I know how much to charge? And like, you know, the person down the road who's advertising on Facebook Marketplace is undercutting me. And, you know, yes, I feel you and I completely understand you. But I'm going to give you access to this free um, this free worksheet ebook, um, and I'm gonna share a link um, later. So all you need to do is go to my website, and then in the under the learn section, there'll be a section that says um, worksheet, and I'll give you a code at the end of this to get it for free, okay? So basically what I want you to do is think about it like it's your hourly rate, right? So if you think about it like, okay, it's gonna cost me $5 for the blank, it's gonna probably cost me $2 or $1 for the, the amount of vinyl, um, you know, how much power it's going to take to run the machine, um, how much packaging am I going to use? Am I going to buy a roll of cellophane from the $2 shop to package up nicely? Am I going to make stickers? Am I going to make thank you cards? All of that costs, right? So you need to total up all of those costs, right? And th that will end up here. Then once, for example, if you have all of these costs, think about how long it will take you to make it, right? So that's how actually I found reverse weeding. So if you guys know me, you know that I'm a big fan of reverse weeding. And it's really, um, now I can do a name in 30 seconds, right? I know in five minutes, I'll have a bottle done from start to finish, less than five minutes, right? I know because I know my font, I know my materials and I know how quickly I can weed, right? But it might not be five minutes for you, right? When you first begin, it might be like, I don't know, half an hour from start to finish when you decide when you decide on the, you know, whatever the, the font may be, right? As you kind of get to know more, more of them, you'll get quicker, which is why I really want you to start with just doing one item first, get really fast at that, get at, be an expert in that, then move on, bring in a new item, right? Yeah, anyway, um, I, this sheet will take you through step by step exactly how to cost something. So um, basically the rule is once you have all your costs, think about how long it will take you and then think about it as, as an hourly rate, right? So say it costs $9 to make a drink bottle and it takes you 30 minutes, right? Um, and then it might take you another, you know, in that time, it might take you some time to cut weed and here, package the item then, um, and you think about it, okay, $9, $9 times three, cause that will take, you know, about that time. Think about it. Is your, and, and you can only make two an hour. That means your hourly rate is $36. Is that worth it? I don't know. It might be, it might be for you. It might not be right. But then you look at it as, okay, say, say I can make a third bottle in that. That means my pricing goes down. Then my hourly rate for 30, for still is $36, but I might be able to pack in more. So it, my hourly rate is higher, right? So again, think about your costing and materials and how you price your item based on an hourly rate, okay? I'm just getting a bit sweaty, so I'm just turning on my fan. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. <clears throat> okay, let me know if the sound um, doesn't come through. I can change it. Okay, so... Again, I'll get, I'll get you this sheet and if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but it's free on my website with a code. I'll give it to you at the end of this workshop. Okay, now this next section here, um, these are my five favorite fonts because I know I've tested and tried them on a vinyl and I know that I can do them really quickly, right? This one is Rainbow Goldie, it's my favorite. This one is called Amatora, I think it's called. This one's called Bodini, this one's called Love Line and one of them is called Mino Line, right? These two are free fonts from Dafont. Um, and Amatora, I think I bought a license to use that front, right? So, and that's another thing that's really important and to include in your costings, some fonts are, pay, are paid, right? And some fonts in Cricut Design Space or whatever program you're using are part of the subscription. So make sure you're including that cost in this, right? And what if, you know, in six months time, you're not really using the subscription anymore. That means that font's gone. So you can't offer, at, offer that to your customer. Right. So uh, again, remember, remember that when you're when you're starting to build um, uh, a bit of a community and you're starting to get people that are interested in your items. OK, I have this image. So I did this up in Canva, which, again, you can get a free um, Canva uh, account to do this. Or you can do this in design space. Just put a rectangle behind it so you don't see the grid when you screenshot it. Right. 
So I use my family names um, as just so they can see it in real life. Some people use font one, font two, font three, etc. Um, but I like that my customer says, okay, I like Jaden font, give me Jaden font, right? For example. Um, save this on your camera roll. So when you're talking to customers and they ask, um, you know, what fonts do I have available? It's literally in your favorites of your album. Send it. Send it to them. They'll, they'll choose and then put it in your order sheet so you know what exactly, um, what color they want, what font they want, etc. Yeah. Um, again, if, if you take away anything from today, make sure you do this, right? Save it on your phone so it's really easily accessible for anybody that wants to talk to you and wants to place an order. Yeah. Okay. Now, I hope I haven't overwhelmed you, but there's so much more to go. <laughs> and feel free to pause. Um, like if you're watching this on replay, pause it, come back to it. If you need a break, completely fine. Okay. So marketing, this is the fun stuff, right? Fun stuff for me anyway. But marketing is how you're going to grow your side business and so how you're going to grow your, your side hustle to make it into an income, right? But the way I see it is that it's not marketing, it's just sharing your journey, right? There is, um, and I'll go through the strategy in a second, but <clears throat> if you think about everything on social media right now, you can tell who's trying to sell you something and who's just trying to share, your, share their journey or um, en en engage you, right? And I purposely do this, right? I, every time I post something on social media, I could tell you, oh, uh, I've got a sale and my leatherette items are the best and 100 greatest quality and like, you know, they're so elegant and so nice and, but no one cares, <laughs> right? No one cares and I don't do that because I want to build a community of, of like-minded people, right? So if I'm trying to sell to you, I'm not gonna build a community. Right. So this will go through exactly how to market and share your journey without selling a thing. Right. You're trying not to sell and you're trying not to push a message down your community's throat. So what is social media? Social media is the front line of community engagement and digital campaigns are about nurturing relationships. Right. So that's a, a corporate way of saying digital campaigns and social media is about building a relationship and making friends with people that are on social, right? Um, and making, building a, a, a friendship with you guys and building a community around you. There's so many businesses out there that are getting social media wrong because all they're doing is saying, I've got this item for sale and it's the best item ever, right? It reminds me of a, of a used car salesman or a car salesman and no offense to anybody that is a car salesman, right? But they'll sell you on, okay, these are amazing leather seats and it's the brand new type of paint. And, you know, um, we've only got one coming, um, you know, so you need to get on it now. See what I mean? It's about product, right? Whereas if to, to be not a used car salesman, I might say something like, oh, I love this car because in my experience, it helps me because of this, right? Or something that I learned about this car is this. Right. So if you look at all of my social media, literally all I want to do is help. Right. And I want the same for you. So what is what will help your customer? Say, for example, you want to grow a personalized gift business. Right. And you your first product is back to school items. Right. So then your messaging will be about, um, you know, I I'm so I'm so overwhelmed preparing these items for kids to school. Right. But what what I found that helped was labels. And now, you know, my labels are, I can do them in a minute. I can have your, your personalized name on them. I can have, you know, an icon on them. So your, your child knows what, it, what, um, what labels are theirs, what items are theirs, right? So you see the messaging has changed already. All I'm doing is sharing a mum hack or all I'm sharing is something that worked for me, right? So then it's about how you're helping the customer. I hope that makes sense, right? No longer about selling. It's not about product or how good your product is, no. It's about your journey, right? So packing videos, um, when you're sourcing new items, when you're um, fi figuring out what's, what's, so, what's best to post on social media today, all of this is part of it, right? Yeah. Okay, Belinda has a question. Should you limit the number of posts in a day? When you're growing and if you have no audience, um, you don't want to spam. Right. So and to this day, I only post once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and I've got a bigger uh, I've got an audience now. Right. So stories, you can do as much as you want to at any one time stories, Instagram stories or Facebook stories. Do that as much as you want to, because it's up to the customer and up to the community member if they consume your content. Right. So short story, short answer is 
Um, yes, limited if you can, um, but stories go nuts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Data. So I love my data. Think about social media. Um, the average person spends about two and a half hours on social media a day, right? That means that 40% of the typical internet user is using the internet, um, at least 40% of their waking life online, right? So say for example, um, you know, we all get eight hours of blissful sleep a night, <laughs> right? That means if they're spending two and a half hours on social media, that almost 40% of that daytime between their day, their day job, running around the kids, all of that is spent on social media, right? So it means there's so much opportunity for you to get into their newsfeed and for them to consume the content, which is marketing, right? This is the, the strategy behind it, right? Yeah. So usage is about 95% Facebook, 31% Instagram, 24% LinkedIn. Now this data came from a social media report last year, um, but this was before threads dropped. So threads dropped really quickly and everyone jumped on it and now everyone's kind of jumped off it and um, everyone's starting to come back to it, right? So again, take these numbers with a grain of salt, but bottom line is the, the opportunity for you to get into news feeds of other people and to grow a community around you is really, really high if you know what to do, right? So again, don't be the used car salesman, right? Don't be that person that's selling, 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 selling. Don't be that person, right? Share your journey and you'll get more of that two and a half hours, get that, that space into the, into the news feeds. So hopefully um, that, that helps. Okay. This is really, really important. So Simon Sinek, if you have time, go to YouTube and type in Simon Sinek golden circle, right? This is um, his theory. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, right? Again, used car salesman, I use that example again, but um, used car salesman will just keep ramming the sales message to you, right? I'm not gonna buy from him, right? But if the salesman came to me and said um, more about his story and about why he started being a used car salesman, Maybe he was homeless. I don't know, whatever the story is. It doesn't have to be tear jerking, right? But whatever his story is, I'm more likely to engage with him. Yeah, Simon is awesome for lots of great series. Totally, yeah, he's, he's like a thought leader in the space. I, I really look up to him. Um, but again, they, buy what, they don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So if you think about Only the Sweet Star, my entire, the, the only reason why I have a business is because of this community right and because all i try to do is help if it means that i save you two minutes by reverse weeding or if it means that i save you from searching the internet far and wide for a, a blanks product right because i do that someone messaged me and says hey debbie i need this item do you know where to get it if i can't get it i'll put you in touch with someone that can right all i want to do is help so that's my why that's my why and that's uh, the the entire premise of my entire business. So my whole social media presence, all my marketing is about me wanting to give you as much information as we can. Think about why we're here right now, right? This workshop, I'm literally brain dumping <laughs> everything that I know to help you. But what is your why, right? Think about that. What is your why? Yes, it could be to um, have an income, right? To have a side income so things aren't so, ha so hard right now. Totally, right? Everyone's trying to do that. But what is your why? Do you want flexibility? Do you want um, you know, to take your family on a holiday? I don't know. I don't know what your why is, but make sure that that drives all of your content and all of your, your communications with everybody, yeah? Okay, selling without selling. People wanna hear from people, right? People wanna hear less about product and there are multiple touch points at any one time. So I'll get to that in a second. But what is your story? What brought you here today? right? If, if you're struggling with what content to put on your social media channels, why are you here? What, why, what are you trying to do, right? Um, you know, people want to hear from people. So if you're going to the post office today or going to Woolies or going to Coles, whatever it is, and you're looking at their blanks, for example, or you got an idea at the shops, or um, I don't know, maybe you're going to Officeworks and printing, um, printing photos as cards, which Janine did that for me the other day, right? Um, people want to hear from people, so tell your story, yeah? It's not about the product. This bit, yes, you heard me right, less product. If you look at all my social media channels, it's almost like an 80-20 split. Out of 10 posts, eight of those will be about my journey and my what I've learned today, what mistakes I've made, you know? And then two of those is about product. Again, people want to hear from people, yeah? Multiple touch points. So the latest stats show that the average... Um, 
time for someone to build trust from you on social media is about seven times. So that means someone has to see your content seven times and be engaged and know who you are before they're even in a in, in any kind of way comfortable to share to purchase from you, right? So and, and I like to say this saying, um, and I use this in corporate world as well. You don't ask someone to marry you on the first date, unless it's for love at first sight, etc. Right? But what are the chances of that happening? You don't, you don't get ask someone to marry you on the first date, right? So you think about it. There has to be at least seven, and probably more, seven to ten touch points before someone is at least comfortable enough to reach out to you, or to message you, or to put an order through, right? So remember that. Okay. So then um, old school thinking, and this is again um, traditional marketing, is that, that you see an ad, you go to the website or you book a meeting with the person if you're um, in service-based service, um, service -based business, and then you make a sale, right? You think about it. TV ads, radio ads, all of the big marketing companies, they're kind of still stuck in this, this world, right? Again, they see it, you see something and then all of a sudden, yes, I need that, <laughs> right? And then they purchase. That doesn't happen anymore. It does not happen anymore. It looks something like this, right? So they might see a social media post, they might go to your website or they might message you. Um, they might uh, join your Facebook group, for example. They might see your blog if you have one. Um, they might see you in an event. Um, they might see it on a podcast, like say, for example, you guessed it on a podcast or um, you, know, you're, you own a podcast yourself. There's probably, they probably leapfrog from every one of these dots before they're comfortable enough to land here, right? So the main takeaway here is that more is more. Seven touch points at least before trust is built enough for a customer to purchase and everyone is at different stages. And you don't want to force somebody that isn't ready to buy from you yet, right? They're not ready to buy from you. They don't know you, they don't trust you, right? So use social media as a way to kind of nurture that along. Again. This is basic, uh, not basic, this is fundamental um, digital marketing and how it works. So again, as a corporate marketer, this is what I teach corporate marketers and corporate teams what to do, right? And I'm teaching you this because as a small business, you have the ability to be so flexible and so agile. You could implement this today, right? Yeah, and it's not hard to do once I show you. Okay. This is the basic um, marketing funnel basics. Now, I hope I haven't lost you. I know it's overwhelming and I know we're running out of time. I'm gonna get through it. Um, but there are normally three stages of the buying cycle. If you think about any kind of purchase that you've made recently, right? You're in the awareness stage. You don't know, um, you know, you, you don't know anything about this person or these products, right? This is that stage. Then you move into a consideration phase. So this stage is kind of like, if you think about buying a blank, for example, the consideration stage is about, oh, I don't know, how am I gonna make this work? What color am I gonna get? Um, how many am I gonna buy? Can I sell them? Um, how am I gonna market them? This is that stage, the consideration stage, right? And then the decision stage is when you purchase, right? But people go in between these stages at any one time and sometimes they, they skip, right? Sometimes, um, you know, they've been at the awareness stage for ages and you think about it, if you bought your cricket machine, how long were you in the awareness stage? How long were you looking at videos, watching YouTube videos, watching TikToks, figuring out which, whether this machine was better for you, not, you know, everyone is different, right? And then you worked into your consideration stage, which is probably the, okay, which model am I gonna get? Uh, the Cricut Joy Extra just came out, or is it the maker? Like, can I make do with the Joy? What do I want? That's the consideration stage. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then after that, it's the decision. Okay, is it on sale? Do I go to Spotlight? Do I go to Harvey Norman, right? So you kind of understand the, how the marketing funnel works. The same thing happens for you and your customer. So when you're growing a side hustle, remember that not when you're in the beginning, everyone is at the awareness stage, right? Everyone is, unless you've got, you know, a family friend or someone that buys from you, then they'll go straight to the, the, the decision phase. So just remember that when you're doing your social media um, content and planning your content, it's really, really important, yeah? Okay, okay, so the ecosystem. So basically, you're probably all saying, hey, Debbie, I get it, I need more content, but I have no time. This is how. You build content creation to what you are already doing. If you're going to make a gift for your son's birthday on the weekend, right, film it. If you're gonna make a gift for a baptism that's happening in two weeks, film it, right? Take a photo. Um, if you can invest in a tripod, which you can get off eBay or, um, you know, I think Kmart has one too. 
um, I, and I can share a link of a tripod that is really, really easy to set up, 10 seconds to set up. You put it on top of what you're doing and it just films your hands, right? Build the content creation into what you're doing because if you're starting to build a bank of content that you have already on your phone, then it's so much easier to post something, yeah? Okay, and content pillars. So content pillars is a, a fancy way of saying um, these are the themes that should be in your content, right? So behind the scenes, what are you about? Who is your persona? How do you engage? Um, you know, is there something in the news that happened um, that you could talk about? Um, educate without lecturing. Remember, there's no selling. Like there is a, you know, you could have an extra dot here that um, is talking about uh, selling. But again, it's going to be a tiny dot because remember, 80-20, right? Larissa says, do you use your phone? Uh, do you use your phone to film or GoPro? I use my phone literally my phone um and there are settings that you can do to make it really high quality so it doesn't look like your phone um you can use a gopro if you want to if you have one but i like to have it on my phone so it's easier for me to edit it if i need to um and then i just post it directly from my phone right again the hacks right if it, done is better than perfect i was telling janine this the other day done is better than perfect right so say you filmed a piece and you're not happy with it or you know you don't have to be in front of the camera or you haven't done your makeup I mean, I'm the perfect example of that. Half the time I'm in my pajamas when I'm shooting video, right? Done is better than perfect. Remember, it's seven times. Seven times before someone is perfect, uh, is, is um, comfortable enough to buy from you, right? So again, it's about throughput and it's about getting um, consistency, consistency around it and pumping it before you get kind of results, right? Georgina says, yes, I need to do this video. Yes, please. You're already making, you're already doing the hard work. Film it, take a photo, right? Then you'll start to build a bit of a content bank and it'll be much easier to post once you have that. Okay. What is already existing in your world? Are there old photos that you have? Can you take photos? Like, uh, like say you made a mug this morning. Can you go outside and take a photo in natural light? Because that's the best ones. Often I shoot um, in front of a hedge or a, br a brick wall. You don't need anything fancy to shoot, right? Get your phone, put it on portrait mode if you want to be extra fancy, <laughs> right? Um, take the photos now and it's done is better than perfect. So get it out there, right? Has someone sent you a nice message? Has someone sent you a nice message that says, oh, I love this, or it was perfect for what I needed? Use that, collect that, right? You could turn that into a graphic in your free Canva um, account and then post that as your post for the day, right? Can you write content? Can you chat GPT the content, right? So chat GPT, you can get a free account. Um, literally, if you type in, uh, write me a blog post about, I don't know, personalized gifting and what the process is, it will write you one, right? You'll have to edit it and you'll, there'll be some work involved in doing that, but the information is there. So if you can do that. Okay, example content. So I'll, um, if you can get your phone out and screenshot this, this uh, take a photo of this slide, because when you're at a stage of, oh my God, I don't know what to post, um, take this out, right? I'm not gonna read through this list, but all of these are literally so easy to do. Five second clips, 10 second clips. Um, you know, how do, can you take a day in the life video? Are you gonna clear your desk the other day? Again, Janine, I'm not picking on you, but you're top of mind right now. <laughs> but Janine did, I told her to take a video of her um, cleaning up all the toys because she um, got one of my toy baskets, right? She bought one of my toy baskets, she personalized it amazingly, and she did a time-lapse video of her putting the toys away. Can you do that? Can you do a packing bag? Say you're packing your, you know, your soccer bag for your child's soccer training tonight. Can you pack that like, and, and take a video of that? There's so many content opportunities, right? So many opportunities for you to just build that bank of content so it's not so overwhelming when you go to post. Okay, uh, we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna go through this, but if you can screenshot this as well or take a picture of this, um, but think about brainstorm right now what you can produce what are the five posts that you could easily whip out today okay so i'm going to go through fulfillment and um it's probably the last 15 minutes i want to have time for questions and stuff so i'm going to whiz through this but fulfillment basically means if you're at a stage now where you're starting to get um orders from other people that are not in your local area then how do you fulfill that like how do you send it via australia post because again it can be quite expensive this is the code that I was talking about earlier. So um, again, take a picture of this retail dollar sign B311. Hopefully that's still active. But if you start a Australia Post business account and put in this code, it will give you band three savings, right? 
everyone starts at band one and I think it's like if you start selling more if you start shipping more than 10 packages a week which is not like it's not hard to do but it's also like if you're just starting out it might not be achievable yet right so then um, it gives you this band three savings so if you were selling 30 packages a week for example it will give you a discounted rate yeah so take note of that one um, if you can buy package in bulk with Ozpost, um, if weight is a factor, only if weight is a factor, right? So if you have really big chunky items, then it's more likely to take advantage of their um, flat rate postage. So again, Australia Post is a massive um, beast. So if you have any questions, just message me about it. But again, we're not kind of at this stage, right? Like, let's just do the local market first, right? And once you start more, you have more um, people coming to you about shipping, then let me know, I'll do another masterclass on this. But there's so many other like couriers that you can do. Couriers, couriers please, I should have written there, or Sendal is another one. Um, but Sendal is not great for rural. So just keep that in mind. These are the Australia Post packaging that, um, this is the Australia Post packaging that I was talking about. So flat rate satchels, you buy them in packs of 10. Um, and this is much cheaper to send because there's a five uh, kilogram limit, right? In each one of these items. So say for example, you started selling candles, right? Um, and candles you can put into a box and then put in one of these bags. So it's only gonna cost you $2.50 for a 10 pack, right? And to ship that, it's probably about nine, $10 because it's a small size. Whereas if you buy one of these boxes, it will charge you based on weight, right? And if your, your candle weighs 600 grams, 700 grams, it's going to be much more expensive to send in a blind box like this than in an Australia Post satchel. So just remember, uh, Georgina says, yes, no way, I'm not even going to do international sales yet. Too scary. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, international sales, yes, I don't do international sales yet. But like, for example, if someone on, uh, on Facebook Marketplace messages you and they're in a different state to you, then the only way... For, to get your item to them is by shipping it, right? So just know this, but again, just message me when you're at that stage, I'm happy to help you. Okay, um, now again, if you're gonna grow um, more, just something to keep in mind, a thermal printer will be your best friend, right? So I do all my thank you stickers on a thermal printer, um, like thank you stickers like this, um, and see this, I did a um, sip sip hooray for my son's birthday. Print and cut is great on Cricut, but it just takes too long. This was print and cut. Um, it just took too long. Whereas I just split out stickers in like 10 seconds. <laughs> so later, invest in a thermal printer for sure, but not right now. I use the Munbin, um, which I love. Okay, this is the Australia Post. Um, when you go, when you get to this stage in my business, this is how, you, this is what it will look like, right? Literally, you put in your customer's name, you put in the weight, you have to make sure you measure it correctly and you have to make sure you have a scale. So even if you use your kitchen scale, which I used that for the longest time, your kitchen scale, it need the Australia Post base, bases your, um, your packaging costs and your fulfillment um, label costs on that, right? So make sure you get it right because if it's not right and Australia Post machines pick up that it's more than what you put in, they'll send your bill. So yeah, something just to note. Um, and especially if you haven't got your, even if you're half a centimeter out, they will send you a bill, right? And you don't want that. So just make sure you've got it right when you're fulfilling your orders. Okay, now when you're in Shopify, when you're at that stage, and again, I don't want to overwhelm you, but something to note for future, get an app called Rice Mill, which is for free, and it will save you from doing this, like copy and pasting every single person's details here. Get this app and it will uh, proper, uh, proper, propagate for you, right? Yeah, so it just saves you more time. Again, the hacks, right? Okay, send that. Send that is a, another courier that I use. It's like a, if you think about like, you know, compare the insurance, you know, that, that is it a sloth in the ad? I don't know. But they are like a, um, a, a central party and then they compare all of the quotes from all the different insurances, right? Send that is the exact same thing. They compare all the couriers, they have all agreements with other couriers um, to make sure that um, you get the best rate, right? So again, if you're sending bigger, heavier items, use somewhere like Send That instead of Australia Post because it's much cheaper. Okay. I know I talk really fast, <laughs> um, but I've probably overwhelmed you, 
But I would love to know if you can comment in the, the comments now, what is the one thing that you have taken away from this session? I would love for you to post about it and tag me because again, I'm giving away one, um, one lucky crafter is going to get access to my crafting a business, um, personalized online course to grow your business. If you're serious about growing your business now, right? Um, I would love for you to post and tag me and I'll reshare them to start growing your online community and to grow, to start sharing your journey. So yes, please do share and I would love to follow your journey as well. Um, and screenshot it and send it to me so that I know that you've done it and I can, um, you know, put you in the draw to win one of those courses. Naisa, hopefully I've said your name right. Nisa, um, with AVN, only go via ASIC. Yes. Not one of those random websites as they often charge people. The amount of times that I get a letter in the mail um, that says my my ABN is not active or I need to register um, to maintain act activity or register my websites. Don't do it, <laughs> right? Don't do it. Only go via ASIC and it's completely free. So don't pay anyone for it. Okay. Whew. Where to from here? So gifts from me. Um, Everyone gets access to the Costigan um, workshop, the masterclass, sorry, the uh, worksheet, I should say, um, use this code. So if you go to my website and then go um, to the top bar, it will say learn, go into the worksheet ebook, add that to your card and add the code masterclass and you'll get it for free. You can download it straight away. Um, if you want to go next level, um, for sure, go in the draw to win a free um, access to my course, uh, but I'm only giving one of those away. If you want to start today and want to start it now, I'm giving away 50% off my course. Um, so again, this is to go deep dive into social media marketing, digital media marketing, but also how to set up your business from start to finish properly, right? I also have my All The Hacks business memberships. So um, it's only $29 a month and a whole bunch of business owners come together. So it's not only crafters, it's all, all different lives. I've got like an interior stylist. I've got um, a small business owner that runs like a community um, chamber. She's part of it too. So um, it's only $29 a month. On the website, it's $49 a month. So use Hacks20 to get $20 off. Um, and can that's cancel anytime. There's a whole lot of tutorials, a whole lot of information there. I come online every month to do a masterclass on uh, a subject that you choose. So, um, you know, happy, happy to do that as well. But I would say, um, so Amanda says, the correct steps to start rolling my online business effectively and not overwhelming with social media posts. Yeah. Oh, so is that what you learned, Amanda? Which I I'm so grateful for. Yes. Yes. I love that you took that away. That's amazing. Um, and if I could, if you take away anything from this, remember that social media doesn't have to be scary and we have to do multiple touch points. But the, the key here is to earn the space. People want to be able to follow you, but if you're starting to cram down sales messages, they're not going to follow you. Yeah. Okay. Whew. I talk so fast and that's a mistake. So I'm just going to skip over that. <laughs> But I'm going to open this up to questions. Who has questions? I would love to answer them while I have you. Um, we've got another five minutes allocated to this because I did um, had the technical difficulties before. I know I talk really fast, uh, but I do that when I'm excited. So, um, you know, and, and bottom line here is I'm here to help you. Like, just message me. I'm just not one of those people that will ignore you. So message me we can um you know if i can help you then and there i will if not i will put you through to um you know somebody that does or i can help you with the course um but hit me with any questions that come through no question is silly i hope i haven't overwhelmed you but um there's so much to learn in this space and i just want to get you started right the the goal here is done is better than perfect so start those accounts start posting start just sharing what you're making because it will make all the difference and you know, especially now, cost of living crisis, everything is going up. Inflation is killing me, if I'm honest. Um, you know, it costs me so much more to bring items here and there's so much for me to share. So um, Amanda says, we'll certainly be rewatching this to see what I may not have fully absorbed. Great. That's the, I would love for you to do that. Um, this is going to be available on the, um, in the VIP group. So pause it, rewind. If you didn't understand something, go back to it, watch it as many times as you need to, to, to take it in, right? Um, Nissa says, with insurance, if you rent, note you need landlord's permission to run business from house. Yes, okay, I didn't know that, but sure, I'm sure that's the case. If you have people coming to you to collect, yeah, um, that makes sense because if someone hurts 
themselves, say, tripping on something, um, you know, on the way to pick up from you, that's, um, that's a liability too. So just make sure you tick all the boxes before you start. Yeah. Um, yeah, just make sure you're doing that. Um, Perry says, heaps to take in and have learned heaps. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. We'll be rewatching. Um, and if there's something in there that you didn't quite understand or need us to explain more, there's so many different um, ways for you to take in the information. I've got a podcast um, and the, there's so many free things on my website and on my, um, on my blog. I'm just here to help. Georgina says, thank you so much for showing me such important info um, with videos. I've been scared. Ha <laughs> yes, I understand. I've been scared, so worrying about perfection, nice and pretty videos, etc. But what I've learned from you is that it does not need to be perfect. Yes. Just show people what you love, exactly what you're doing. And, um, and she says, I actually do love watching your videos, which, like you say, are not perfect. Exactly. Um, you make me happy. Oh, so I'm so, oh, I'm getting tingles. Thank you so much, Georgina. I actually do loving your video, videos, which like you say, not perfect, yeah. Um, and you show me what I need to see about product I'm interested in rather than perfection, sales and exactly. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And, you know, once you start building that content bank and you change your mindset and you change your messaging around sharing your journey, it makes such, it makes such a difference, right? Yeah. So I'm going to hang around here for a couple of minutes um, just for some questions. But let me uh, hit me with any questions. So Belinda says, my daughter and I have been talking about this since last year and want to start it now. Great. Yes. Um, so Belinda says, thank you so much. Already created socials and tag you. Yes, Belinda. I love this. Yes. I'm going to um, stalk everyone's socials in a second. Oh, great. I can see some of your um, tags coming through. Amazing. Um, love the fact that you're, uh, you are needed as a hard sell. Yes, 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 for sure. Um, I am so not about the hard sell. Um, if you, let me put my camera on so you can see what I'm doing. Um, that you're not in for the hard sell. Yes. So many people are these days. I know. Right. And it hurts me. <laughs> um, we'll be rewatching and taking notes. Thanks for this and all you do. Oh, I'm so grateful. There's so many, um, oh, where's my camera here? So many have come through. I'm so, I'm so grateful of people just tagging me. Um, Love the codes for discounts, especially for something like shipping. Yes, for sure. Leah says, thank you so much. I'm going to rewatch. Pia says, great tips and advice. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay. So I'm going to comment here with all the links that you need um, and all the codes and all that stuff because I know there's a lot um, to take in. Obinda says, I'm tossing up between using my personal social media accounts or making new ones. With the new ones, I won't have anyone on them to start. Should I use my personal ones? Use both. So um, get your, your social media names of your business name, for sure, do that, um, but use it as a collaborator. So um, my personal account is often a collaborator with my own Little Sweet Stuff account. So you'll start to get audiences going between both. Um, but I, I, I argue that you won't have anybody because you will, you have me following you. <laughs> and if you post your socials in the group, I'm sure a lot of people will follow you. So you won't, have, you won't be starting from scratch, right, is what I'm saying. Yes. So, um, yes, bottom, like I started off using my, my personal socials too, but, um, in the end it got really confusing. Like, uh, are they messaging about business? Are they not? So just, um, save all your business socials if you can. Belinda says, post the business names to the group. We can all follow each other and support each other. Yes. Yes, please. Um, and you know, I have FOMO too. <laughs> so I want to see what everyone's doing and everyone's making. And if I can help to support you by sharing your posts, sharing all the items that you're making, then you best believe I'll be doing that. So, and I'm sure other people will be wanting to do that too. And you know what? Um, there's so much that we could learn just by listening to each other, right? So imagine if you are, you have a problem right now, Abby, the other day posted in the group about, um, how she bought these um, can wraps that were not quite perfect in terms of the print and she didn't know they were at the time. But I commented, somebody else commented, like, you know, there's so many different things that we can learn from each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Nissa's answering to Binny's question as well. Um, and I think she's echoing what I've said. So yeah, all good. Cool. Okay. Um, so that's the end. I, uh, I don't think there's any more questions. I hope I haven't missed anybody, but if I have, I will jump back on, um, and answer you via the comments, but I hope that helped. And I, again, I know I talk really fast, but I get really excited about this stuff. And, and the reason why I left corporate is because, I just felt like I was hitting my head against a 
a, a, a wall a lot of the times because corporate can't move as fast as small business does, right? So literally, you can start it now. Bindi says, yes, I'll create them now and tag you. Great, start it now. Start it now, and if it's not perfect, that is totally okay. Done is better than perfect. So I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you so much for joining me. And whether you're joining me um, live right now, there's about, I think there's like 40 people on at one stage, which is mind-blowing to me. Um, but join me later on the replay, and still, hit me up with any questions. I'm happy to help. Thanks so much, guys. Yay! I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amanda. See you later. Bye, Georgina. You can do it. Yes, Georgina. Yes, you can. You can. It's not overwhelming. You just need to start. Yeah? Start now. Oh, I'm so glad. Bindi says, that was so amazing. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm so glad. Oh, I hit my mic. Sorry. <laughs> Nibby. <laughs> Belinda says, thank you. No, uh, you are so welcome. Hit me up with any questions. And I look forward to seeing all of your new social media channels. I'm so excited to follow. Thanks, guys. Bye.